Hello. So I have a story. Uh, I will try to make it brief and not incredibly drawn out, but I don't know how well I can do that. So bear with me. But I think it's quite interesting about an item, um, an antique item that um, is worth a lot more than I expected and has a huge history. So I'm just going to jump right into it and get started. So I have a friend, a seller client of mine that brings me random assortments of things that she is ready to part with and I sell online on eBay for her at a commission. And one day she brought me this box of a mishmash of things um, and one of the items was this. It is a dagger, <laughs> which when she gave it to me, she's like, I don't know what this is. Um, here's a dagger. Good luck. Like I had I know nothing about it. Um, I don't know if you want to deal with it or if it's really worth anything. And so that begins the journey of finding out its history. So I had two things to go on is one, obviously it's a cool dagger <laughs> and two, it is actually monogrammed. It's monogrammed and um, hallmarked. So I'm going to look here, right here, try to show you right here. I, and we can't get close enough. I'll put a picture up it is the hallmark and it is a G I no G J it looks like, um, eight three zero S. And so I looked up silver hallmarks that are eight three zero because 830 isn't the typical purity of silver that you usually see. You usually see 915. So 830 uh, comes out of like Scandinavia area, um, Denmark, Copenhagen particularly. Um, so that gave me a clue. And then when I look up GJ, um, it gives me, well, I'm going to say this the American way. George Jensen, but I soon discovered it was, I wrote it down, Giyu Yin Sin. Giyu is the like Swedish way of saying it. I don't know. Correct me in the comments. I, so Giyu Jensen, um, was a silversmith out of Copenhagen and he, this mark particularly dates it to 950, 1915 to 1930 and Guillaume started his, opened his own silversmithery in 1904 in Copenhagen and kind of became more um, prominent and um, recognized about in the 1915, 1920 range. So um, I'm looking online, trying to find anything I'm going to call him George. It's just easier. Anything made by George um, that looks like this. And obviously, I mean, it's so unique. Like, is it? I don't know anything about daggers. Is it a dagger? It's not sharp. Is it supposed to be sharp? Like a knife? Like a sword? I feel like a dumb blonde when I say that because I, I don't know. Is it a letter opener? It's awfully large to be a letter opener. Um, I don't know. So I'm looking around on the internet trying to find anything that's similar. I cannot find anything as ornate, as large. Um, the closest thing I can find are letter openers or like some smaller knives. And they are typically selling in the price range of 400 to $600 on like eBay. Um, I'm looking on Worth Point as well, which is another site where you can look up um, past solds. So I go with that back to my seller and I'm like, I, you know, it's such a unique item. It's made by this person. Um, I obviously am not an appraiser. I'm not, don't specialize in this. Uh, I can just put it at auction, say a thousand dollars. It's definitely worth a thousand and we can let the auction run out and give its true value and see what happens. And she is stoked. This isn't her taste. She didn't have this out displayed in her home and she just had it in a drawer. And she's happy to see it go and get a thousand bucks. So she's stoked. So put it online auction for a thousand dollars. 
and almost instantly I get a message, a private message from somebody that says, hey, what's your buy it now price? Which tells me a few things. It tells me that they're obviously willing to pay more than a thousand dollars that my asking price and they want it now. They don't want to be outbid by anybody else. They want it. So clearly, you know, as I knew, this was something important and interesting and cool. And it's a, it's a freaking dagger. It's awesome. So that's exciting. So obviously we know it's going to sell for at least a thousand dollars. So then a few hours goes by, I think, um, it's like the next morning maybe. And I get another private message from somebody and this person says, Hey, do you know the history of this? How did you acquire it? And what's your buy it now price? And now I'm like, kind of want to vomit. I'm freaking out because I knew this was a big deal, but I don't really, I don't know. I, like I said, I am not an appraiser. I don't specialize in George Jensen. I don't specialize in antique silver work. I freaking out. So clearly there's something more here. So then I get to thinking, um, I should look up these buyers that are messaging me and see if I can find anything, if I can like Google them. So I look up the first guy and he is a antique collector and dealer out of London. So that seems like kind of a big deal. He knows what he's looking at. And then the second guy that messaged me and asked me if I know the history and how did I acquire it? He is an owner and founder of a silver retail sales shop specializing in George Jensen work in freaking Copenhagen. <laughs> so he knows what I have in my hands right now. So now I'm really vomiting because I'm freaking out because I put this antique item online with not enough knowledge of what it is for a thousand dollars. Obviously, you know, it's at auction. Nobody can just buy it up from under me, you know, whatever. I can cancel the auction, you know, whatever. So I contact my seller client and tell her everything that I've told you. And she kind of wants to vomit too. We're both freaking out and we get to talking and I'm like, well, so my thinking is, I haven't told you this yet, but the monogram, the monogram is an L and a crown. I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll put a picture up. And obviously the dagger itself, its handle is a crown. So I initially didn't think anything, I didn't think too far into it because things are monogrammed with initials all the time. There are often hallmarks and monograms of crowns. Uh, I didn't think anything of it. So then I'm talking with my seller client and we're like, well, could this be of greater importance? And I know probably what you're thinking right now and we're right there in our conversation too. And we're like, maybe this was for royalty, a crown. So we get to searching online and I decide I need to look up the the royal lineage in Denmark and at the time. So I have, my, I have my notes here because I cannot remember these names. So this was made again, I, the, the hallmark on the back dates it to 1915 to 1920, 30, around there. And that puts it at, let's see. So that puts it at the time, the king of Denmark is King Frederick the Eighth, who married Princess Louise of Sweden, who obviously is now Queen of Denmark. So Queen Louise and L. Is that a coincidence? Potentially. So I have a dagger with an L on it with a crown. So then we find the coat of arms for Princess Louise of Sweden and her coat of arms has basically the same crown. It is potentially a coincidence. I mean, a crown is a crown, right? But each little, I don't know, crown term terminology, but each like spike on the crown is a little ball. And I'm looking around at different crowns on the internet and I'm not seeing any other with the little balls on top. 
So not only does her family coat of arms have this crown, but now this crown is on the dagger. So now we're throwing up a little bit more of freaking out of that. Am I, am I holding a dagger that was commissioned for royalty? Like in little old Boise, Idaho? Like how is that, how is that a thing? So then I get a message. Oh, sorry. I'm skipping ahead. I'm skipping ahead. I'll try to calm down. So we decide, all right, this is getting serious. We need to cancel the auction. There's a potential. It could, you know, the auction could go to a certain price point that is appropriate, that is a worthy for this dagger, but we don't know what that is. We should get it appraised. Um, it would be more financially probably appropriate in my seller's eyes to get the most out of it. And then also, you know, just to know the, the history of it, I, I think it's important. So we cancel the auction and which as a seller on eBay, you don't want to do, you get a, a fee, you get a ding on your account, but obviously that's minimal compared to letting a, a freaking dagger, silver dagger go for a thousand dollars online when it could have gone for more. So then I message the, the two people. Oh, I forgot to tell you, huh? I forgot to tell you the second person that messaged me, who is the owner and founder of the company in Copenhagen that specializes in George Jensen silver work. He placed the bid. So it currently is at my asking price of a thousand dollars. So I message him after I cancel his bid and cancel the auction. And I'm like, Hey, so I'm sorry. <laughs> and I told him like, this is what we think it is. We think it's Queen Louise of Denmark and our mistake. Like we didn't know. And now we know, and we don't really know, but we think we know. And maybe, you know, do we all know? We're going to get it appraised. So he messaged back and he basically says that he, um, this is what he does is he acquires George Jensen pieces for the Royal family and he will pay whatever we get appraised for. And he basically wants it. He never says, no, I don't think it's Queen Louise's. He actually confirms like, I, this is what I do is I buy stuff for the Royal family. You know, like this is basically saying, yes, it's from the Royal family. And then he says, I'm actually bidding on a piece in a different, from a different auction house next week with the same crown on it. And then I'm like, oh my God. So I go to the auction house, find the piece and it has the same crown on it. And their, their appraisers their that are trained and educated in this, unlike me right on their listing, what it is. <laughs> and I wrote it down. <laughs> so the piece is this little teeny, it's like a one and a half inch tall by one and three quarter inch round silver, like box with a crown on it and a C. And I wrote it down. It is King Christian the fourth of Denmark who ruled in 1852, I believe is, I have that note. I think that's what it was. He, after I look, is the father of King Frederick the eighth, who is married to Queen Louise of Denmark now. So basically same family, royal family, same crown. It's basically official. This is a royal dagger and I'm holding it. It's amazing. <laughs> so that piece ended up selling for just, just under a thousand dollars. It's a teeny little box. Um, it's not a, I don't even know how, I can't remember how long this is. It's not a, like a 13 inch ornate dagger. Um, it's not made by George Jensen, who is a very, um, renowned silversmith. Um, and it sold for a thousand. So what, 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 what would this be valued out? 
<sighs> so at this point, my seller understandably has decided to go with a large auction house with highly educated appraisers to sell this item um, to a wider audience with hopefully buyers looking for just the item, a dagger for their home that have nice deep pockets. <laughs> she is going to go with Sotheby's and they will be auctioning it off this October. Um, they gave her a very rough estimate of three to five thousand dollars and then plan to give her a more accurate estimate once they have said dagger in their hands. So um, my plan is to let the, the two buyers that reached out to me on eBay know of this and then if they would like to, they could go to Sotheby's and place their bids there. Um, so this is, this is round one of the dagger series and I hope to bring you, or at least I full on plan on bringing you uh, round two this fall with the outcome and the price the dagger sold for and obviously if I am correct in my thinking that this is a royal dagger and it was Queen Louise of Denmark we shall find out so I will let you know this fall if you made it this far <laughs> thanks for following along uh, to this crazy story and hopefully you learned something like I did <laughs> <laughs> and um, don't forget to subscribe and check back in this fall when I have round two. Okay, thanks so much. <laughs>